All right, everyone, it's time for the occult video 175, The Dead Voice, and a little spooky title there. But I was, I was ruminating on it last night because I was watching, I can't remember what I was watching, but anyway, it was, it was a, a song. And the singer was dead, of course, it died in a plane uh, crash, a labouche, actually, from the 1990s. Interesting band, uh, a little act there, and uh, the woman that was the singer is, is dead. She died, I think, at the end of the 90s, if I remember correctly. She was involved in a crash over there in Europe. Uh, and so when you're watching those music videos, you're looking at a dead person singing. And I thought, well, that's a little bit on the surreal side, but what about the spiritual sort of side of this? Um, I've spoken of the second death, for example. The first death that someone experiences is physical. The second death is when they're totally forgotten. Uh, technology is making it uh, increasingly to the point where people who have set themselves apart from others, where especially if they're involved in any form of physical media, something that can literally be maintained after they're dead, that second death is either significantly staved off or, or totally absent. Like George Washington uh, is remembered by many people. He's, you know, back then, in those days, prior to, well, you, you can make a song, you know, have a physical recording, you know, the wax cylinder sort of stuff, uh, uh, TV, internet, radio, stuff like that. Now, you would have had to have set yourself apart more or delved into literature, and of course, you didn't even have photography at the time. Uh, once you get the realm of photography and early sound recordings, uh, things change, and that I think it has a, something to do with people's spirituality. It affects it. It affects the way that people see the spiritual. Uh, because the concept of being forgotten uh, even rolls over into sort of the funerary practices uh, of some uh, cultures of people. Uh, for instance, I can't remember the tribe's name, but they store their dead in mummified form in like little uh, perches on, on these rocky cliffs and they preserve them and every year they take them down, sort of wash them and redress them and, and wash their clothes and make sure they're not rotting and stuff. It's a, in a uh, sort of ritualized remembrance sort of behavior to prevent uh, I guess bad things from happening to prevent the dead from being forgotten. Uh, the concept, even within like Hollywood, you think of think of uh, Christmas Carol, uh, when uh, Scrooge is being shown his own grave. It's sort of in this forsaken, lonely, you know, you know, thorn overgrown part of the cemetery. He's been forgotten. That's his future if he stays, you know, basically a, a cold-hearted bastard. The only thing he'll ever be remembered for, the dregs of society will remember him as being a greedy old, old uh, uh, cunt, really. Uh, and they're going to bury him in a pauper's grave because they're not going to give a fuck about anything else. Be like, yeah, he now his big-ass gravestone over there in the corner. We don't even want to remember that he ever existed. Uh, this ritualized behavior, though, uh, exists elsewhere in Rome. Uh, they literally would ritualistically uh, forget sort of the emperors that they really hated. Uh, at some point, they would take out their rage. They would uh, behead their statues and toss them in the river. Uh, they would score their names out of the history books, burn up anything that mentioned them. They thought because they had an emperor cult, the concept was the dead, the dead emperor was still kind of sort of spiritually there, still part of the state. It was an effort to reduce or destroy their power. It appears the Egyptians may have done the same thing, both in, uh, in that sense and in reverse. Uh, for instance, the Sphinx originally was, was not a, a sort of pharaohic head. It wasn't a, a sort of anthropic cat's head. It was a jackal. It was Anubis. Um, there's the pretty good reason to believe that it was recarved, for instance, proportions, for instance, some of the stones at the base in front of the paws uh, seem to indicate that. At some point, I guess, someone was really pissed at that particular deity, said, oh, well, forget this shit, we're going to have a, a different, you know, <laughs> individual uh, poised there. Doesn't look very cat-like to me, it looks more like a human, but whatever. Uh, but yes, uh, ritualistically forgetting people is, a, is seen as a way to reduce their power. The concept of uh, sort of remembrance, uh, leaving offerings to ancestor worship really ties into it. In some of the Eastern cultures, it's still quite common. Ancestors, uh, if you look at uh, what was the name of the ruins there in Syria, one of the earliest cohesive towns ever uh, formed. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Not Gobekli Tepe, but I believe it's Catalhoyuk. Uh, I believe was the name. Uh, if I'm remembering my archaeology correctly, I think I'm talking about Catalhoyuk here. Uh, here you have sort of a honeycomb structure of of uh, homes, and there are like you know wooden ramparts and little paths on the roofs. They didn't have like the concept of streets. 
as in streets, delineating homes, they were all sort of honeycombed together. It was a semi-separate society in which people had their family sort of home, but they were all sort of part of a tribal community, kind of obviously tightly knit. They were living in close proximity. But anyway, they took the dead, and they took the dead and they sort of buried them under the uh, the hearthstones and things. And it appears that they ritually, uh, ritualistically removed the remains from time to time to keep them clean, probably to do other ritualism, maybe empowerment before battle or something here. You know, oh, Grandpa, you're such a good hunter. Let me polish your skull so I can really uh, catch a, a good deer today. And, and it was a ritual as a way to remember the dead. Thus, with the rise of video, uh, things like that. Uh, the, you, you can hear the dead speak. Quite, quite literally, we can now hear them speak in their own voices as well. Uh, music is a big part of that. When we think, uh, a lot of the music that I like comes from you know, the, the 80s or before. A lot of the people that I like to listen to are already dead. Now, a lot of my favorite artists are already uh, departed. John Lennon's dead. Uh, the singer from LaBouche, whose name escapes me, is, is dead. A lot of those 60s bands their members are slowly dying off over time. Eventually, unfor unfortunately, no matter how uh, resistant he is to aging, like he pounds his body, he abuses himself for 50 years, and he still actually looks pretty good. Ozzy Osbourne, though, is not immortal. Eventually, he has to go to hell, because he has to take over there in order to ensure Armageddon comes. Uh, so he, he has to go meet Satan. Now, he, he still talks about his Christian beliefs. I'm sure that they're genuine, but, you know, you got to at least visit the brimstone, dude. You know, I know that there's an inseparable gulf between heaven and hell, according to Christian uh, lore. But you know, come on, can't you can't you like just take an angel, slice its wings off? You know, you get to bite its head off too. Put the wings on you, and then like fly across the gulf. Isn't that possible? And then you can go like back and forth. Like, I think doesn't Jesus goes to hell, and he manages to go back to heaven? So, fucking, I guess it wasn't that inseparable. You know, Ozzy is close to Jesus. Uh, eventually Billy Idol will die. Eventually uh, Dave from Depeche Mode, unfortunately, will, you know, the, he's not on the heroin anymore, so hopefully, you know, years later, but, you know, eventually he'll die. Eventually I'll die. People will be watching my videos probably after I'm dead. That's the funniest thing in the world to me. It's like, well, <laughs> as I've be remembered, my books, which have uh, my name on them. You know, I'm the only Tarl Warwick in the world, so, you know, my books are out there. People will remember me after I'm dead. Uh, I've got, you know, there are recordings of me uh, sound-wise, because I made music, most of which is instrumental, but uh, it's there. Uh, and I take great happiness in that knowing that there's a pretty good chance at this point that as long as I keep doing the sort of work I'm doing a hundred years after I'm dead, someone's going to go into the grandma's attic and find their collection of Styx Hexenhammer merchandise. And they'll have, they'll have the collectible mug, and, and, you know, old antiquated technology, which at that point means flash drives probably, uh, full of like, you know, video recordings, and they'll, they'll have to buy an antique computer just to watch it. Like, they won't even have laptops like this probably at that point. You know, and I could die tomorrow, but you know, if I did, if I suddenly disappear, you should watch all my videos for a long time because then you're, you're empowering me in a spiritual sense. I literally believe that that has to do with, uh, and I don't believe in karma, but I do believe that collective willpower, yeah, that might be able to uh, influence the afterlife or, or reincarnation or whatever exists. I tend towards reincarnation as a belief. I think it makes more sense. Reincarnation makes more sense than resurrection, in my opinion. Uh, spiritual forces make more sense than gods, in my opinion. But I, even if I'm wrong, if I'm in hell, okay. Well, then maybe... Uh, I'll be able to hear like my own voice from hell and I'll sit there grinning uh, and, and then I'll get raped by Satan or something. That's about all. Peace out.